In this week's Retro Core, we are doing something a little different. We are taking a look at Asuka 120% Burning Fest, a series of games by Filling Cafe that started life on the FM Towns on March 11th, 1994. I no longer own the original game, so the footage you are seeing here is taken from my Retro Core FM Town special. Needless to say that the original game wasn't all that good. So let's move on to the second release and start taking a look at the series in more detail. On April 22nd, 1994, Asuka 120% got a release on the Sharp X68000. So before we talk about this version of the game, what is Asuka 120% Burning Fest all about? Well, this is a preemptive work of a so-called girl fighting game in which all the playable characters are women. Until the Saturn game, that is. You take part in the mega fight for budget competition against clubs. Seriously, that's what it translates to. Each member fights by making full use of the skills that make the best use of the characteristics of each club. So you have scientists, gymnastics performers, dancers, tennis players and so on. It really is quite odd, but who really cares about the story? The Japanese do of course. Each version of Asuka 120% comes with a story mode, normal and versus mode. They all basically use the same stages and music too but each game does have its own original features or additions. As you can see and hear, the Sharp X68000 version is very much the same game that was first released on the FM Towns. The only real difference is the option to choose between three different sound sources. So we're going with the internal audio because FM synth rocks. The game features many flaws. The AI can be cheap, difficulty is too tough even on normal, moves can be a little awkward to pull off and the feel of the game can be a little sluggish. So yeah, this game has issues, but the framework is there for what would become a great series. We have good animation for the time, detailed characters, good music, interesting moves and a cool counter attack play mechanic. Phil and Cafe had something special and they knew it. On December 22nd, 1994, the FM Towns got an updated version of the game known as Asuka 120% Excellent Burning Fest. Yep, this is where all the subtitles started for each following release. So how does this game differ from the original that came out on the FM Towns and X68000? Well, the game now has variable speed settings. However, I find the standard to be perfect. The game also plays smoother with moves feeling like they flow into each other better. The mix of FM and CD audio is also great and the speech sample quality has really been boosted. But what on earth happened to the graphics? The stills are high resolution for the time, but look more like something found on a Japanese PC of the time. Yeah, I know the FM Towns was also a PC, but games on that looked more in the style of a console. The in-game graphics are now all blocky, in an attempt to make them look larger, Phil and Cafe have actually zoomed up smaller sprites. The look isn't bad and you do get used to it, but meh, it's not for me. So to sum up this version, it plays and sounds better, 
but maybe it looks worse. July 28, 1995 saw the release of ASCO 120% Maxima Burning Fest for the PC Engine CD. This port is clearly based upon the original more than excellent and it shows in the graphics. The once detailed sprites on the X68000 and original FM Towns release look rather ugly though on the lower resolution PC Engine, but don't let that fool you into thinking this is a crappy version of the game. Far from it. Maxima introduces four new characters, being Kathy, Nana, Kyoko and Kalina with her pet frog. These new characters can be fun to play, but do seem a little rougher in the animation department compared to the six returning characters. They are also a little unbalanced, especially Kathy I found. This version introduces the Gambare shout when you need encouragement. Gambare basically means go for it or don't give up. For a PC Engine Super CD release, this isn't bad, but it is kind of overshadowed by the many quality SNK ports on the system and the mighty Street Fighter 2 port. Here we go with the big boys of the series, starting with the first of three PlayStation entries. This one is Burning Fest Special, which was released on March 29th, 1996. No. Just no. What on earth were Phil and Cafe thinking with this mess? Not only do we get really low resolution backgrounds, player sprites and artwork, just look at how awful those portraits are during the character select screen. But we also get crappy looking polygon floors and low sample rate audio. Well, besides the music since that is streamed from the CD. But how does the game play? Not bad if I'm being honest, but it isn't really as fluid as later releases. Burning Fest Excellent was released on May 9th, 1997 for the PlayStation. This is nothing more than a revamp of Special. Improvements include more animation, high resolution artwork for stills, and improved gameplay, making the game feel more fluid. Oh, and the introduction of the character, Shinobu. The character portrait art has also been changed, for better or worse. Well, that's up to the individual.
その1ページをより充実したものとするために少女たちは持てる情熱のすべてをこのイベントにぶつけ合うのです。Now, this is where the series peaked in my opinion. And it makes sense because Asuka 120% Limited Burning Fest was released on the Saturn on October 9th, 1997, and should have also been released into the arcades by Kaneko, but sadly that never came to light. This game features the best character animation so far, as well as the most beautiful looking sprite work. The backgrounds have unfortunately lost all animation, but now they zoom like a Neo Geo fighter, adding to the gameplay. Talking of which, this game is so smooth when it comes to playing it. Everything flows so well. It really is a joy to play, and the big change from the typical Street Fighter or SNK fighters of the time. This is also the first game in the series to feature an FMV opening, although the quality is awful. Oh, and a vocal music track. Two new characters are also introduced to the series. Tetsuo Ogigaya and Genchiro Shindo, the school principal and the first male character in the series. There was to be another release for the Saturn called Limited Over, but due to the closure of Phil and Cafe, the game was never released. Here we have an unfinished version of the game, which was released by the original developers in 1998. It introduces even bigger graphical effects when the characters hit each other, tweaks to the gameplay make it more balanced, and an all new deathmatch mode. The story mode and all character art is missing though. With Phil and Cafe going bankrupt in 1998, this May 27th, 1999 title, known as Burning Fest Final, was actually developed by Success. This version of the game is based upon the Saturn game, but now with a few more flashy effects when moves are pulled off. I can imagine this is what Limited Over would have been had it ever got finished. The character sprite work and backgrounds do seem dark in this game. I wonder if that has anything to do with them being ported from the Saturn. Something that wasn't ported though are the zooming stages and the voices come to think of it. They seem to have all been changed. Overall, this is another great version of the game, but just loses something that the Saturn version had. Final feels a little cramped, although I do like the more flashy moves. Let's take a look at all those versions of Asuka 120% Burning Fest running side by side. <laughs> 